glorious and long ago, what the world has seen in totally lost, stumbling in the dark night of its own sorceress, God had sent a light into the darkness, hopeless despair release of his own creation. God had sent not a giant, but a helpless infant, not an armored warrior, but a baby, for their own into hearts that could refuse him and hands them to abuse him, God has sent his most fragile and yet his most powerful gift, his love incarnate, his son.
rushes into our hearts this year, like a long-awaited visit from an old friend, with our senses awakened and our spirits aglow, we respond to the music and the color and tradition of the season of life. It's a time of nostalgia, looking back into the faces and memories of Christmas gone by. It's a time of joy, rekindling our hope for the future. A time of faith and family and friends. And most of all, it's a time for finding in the eyes of children. The use and wonder that makes Christmas shine. I know. 
But somehow I have a feeling you'll teach me much more than I could ever teach you. And then later, when the time comes, I'll have to let you go because I think you're here for something far greater than just to make me happy. In the meantime, though I'm glad you picked me as your father, little Yeshua, whoever you are.
for many of us here tonight. God has provided a pathway of light for our lives. It is often in this special season of the year that we look back over the past and clearly see how God has led us to where we are today. But let us never forget that while many of us feel the warmth of God's light during the season, there are countless others around us and maybe even here with us tonight, who feel a sense of darkness, of brokenness, of pain. We believe in a world full of darkness, so many hearts are in prison from the bitterness. Families are torn by separation and divorce. Jobless men and women find themselves unable to care for their families. And the death of loved ones lingers in our minds. All we have to do is look. We will look into the faces around us and we will know how desperately we all need the light of Christ.
small town in the north of the country, in a place called the Lake District. And uh, I was brought up uh, by a, a family that my parents were, one was Protestant, the other one was Catholic, and they didn't really have an interest in, in any religion. But I went to a Catholic school anyway, a school uh, run by uh, nuns, a convent, and uh, there I learned lots of things about Catholicism, uh, but not very much about Jesus. So I went on, uh, and eventually when I got to the age of about 14, I left all of that behind me. I decided I, it wasn't of any interest to me, so I left it behind. And life went on, I got a job, I went into the Royal Air Force, and during that time um, I was looking for things, I was searching, searching, but I didn't know what for. Now, you look in different places, like you look in the occult and things like that, um, not healthy. So, I was at work um, and I had a friend, and this friend at work, he was a Christian, and he would talk to me sometimes about Jesus, and at first I wasn't really interested, but something in the back of my mind made me think, oh, I need to find out a bit more about this. So one day I asked him, I said, Alan, I said, tell me more about this Jesus. So he did. And he told me, and um, later that night, on a night shift, in the middle of some uh, hills in the, in the countryside, in a concrete bunker, concrete facility underground, I gave my life to the Lord. And that was the beginning of a new life for me. Uh, I went on through difficulties and good times and bad times, learning more and more about the Lord. It took me a long time, but eventually uh, the Lord led me to a particular church about four years ago, and that church in England uh, was a blessing to me because the pastor and the people there, they helped to prepare me for the work that the Lord had got for me. And that work, I'm still working on it, but here I am in the Philippines, Serving the Lord. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Maria Socorro Ines. I was born in a devoted Roman Catholic. My mother was the president of CWL in our municipality of Calamansi. When I met my husband in 1978 in Sulan Sultan, that's the that's the start of my struggles in my spiritual life. He always bring me every day after office in the afternoon and Sunday in the church because he is the friend of the pastor. He let me attend EWP fellowship, which I fell out, out of place. Being a church officer, that he always attend meeting that sometimes I'm mad and said to him, sobra ka pa sa pastor. Mabuti sa simbahan ka na lang magtira. But because I saw how good work in the life of my husband, and as the Lord continued to speak to me and come to understand that Jesus was born as a gift to all. He suffered and died instead of us for the forgiveness of our sins. And rose from the grave on the third day, that we will have also life after death. I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior into my heart. In 1983, I was diagnosed with heart disease, PBC, premature ventricular contrast. In 1989, I was also diagnosed with toxic uh, goiter. They checked my blood, sobrang taas. But with prayer, petition to God, and discipline to myself, God really answered my prayers. God is our healer. God bless us all. Elinita Serrano. Praise God, there were two things that happened this month as the highlight of my ministry. I was a 
assigned to give a meditation or exhortation to the female inmates of the provincial jail a couple of weeks ago. After my talk, Mrs. Herrera gave a challenge if who would like to receive or accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Praise God! His word did not return forward. Two ladies accepted the Lord, and then Mrs. Herrera lived the prayer of acceptance. Second, second, it was December 15, Monday, when a friend from Bacolod City came and invited me to join the get together at the Ching restaurant together with the regional director of BIR Region 12, Director Lorna San Tobias, who happened to be her classmate. To me, she looks pale and sickly. I learned later on that she, this is undergoing dialysis a few days ago. Healing is one of the topics. It is in this situation that I share the word of God and the power of Jesus in healing. Then I told her, Director, pwede ako makapangamuyo sa emo? Sila niya, yes, ma'am. So I did not lose time. I sat, or I sat beside her, put my arms on her shoulder, and prayed earnestly for God's healing. And after I have done this, he hugged me and kissed me and said, thank you very much. I praise the Lord for widening my territory of ministry in prayer. Her visitors from Ilo City and Bacolod City, Mom, pwede mo man kami mapangamuyuan. She begged, they begged for my prayer. I said, yes. So I said, the director said, let us go to Lake Cebu. So I went together. This is what I said of the highlights and what a wonderful ministry. I had experience.
long ago, the prophet Isaiah wrote, Your sun will not, your sun will set no more, nor your moon will be. But the Lord will be with you an everlasting light. The candle lit tonight represents that everlasting light, the light of Christ in our lives. As we spread this light throughout the room, let us see it as a challenge to spread this light throughout the world, till every heart has been touched by the beauty of this everlasting light. Yeah. 
Lord God, you are truly a light into the darkness. We praise you and thank you for sending the love of your Son, Jesus, into our lives. Keep the love of glow in our hearts. Send us out tonight, Lord, as one body to shine for you. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.
we thank you Lord for indeed your God who is so loving, so gracious, merciful and compassionate. Although we are not deserving of God because we are indeed sinners. But Lord, we thank you because you did not stop loving us, O oh God. Thank you because you have given us, Lord, your precious gift. And that is your Son, Jesus Christ. Who also gave himself, who died on our step, so that through his death and through the shedding of his precious blood on the cross of Calvary, we could have forgiveness of our sins. We thank you, Lord, for the precious gift that you have given to us, O oh God. And that's the reason of our celebration for this Christmas season. Because without the Lord Jesus Christ, then we could not have hope. We could not have that assurance of that. And we thank you because by believing in Him and receiving Him as our Lord and Savior, as you have also, Lord, promised, as you have assured us in your word, we could have life at this eternal. now. Thank you, Lord. And that is also our further Father, that we could also, Lord, be light, channels of your blessings, O God, that through us also, Lord, people would be ushered to your kingdom for the glory and honor of your name. Lord, we would like to thank you for your presence tonight. Thank you for your success, the victory that you have given to us, O God, in our Christmas cantata presentation. We give you all the glory, the honor that you deserve, O God. We thank you, Lord, for the presence of each one. And it is my fervent prayer that we will continue to bless them indeed, Lord. May the messages of the songs, their Father, Lord, that even from your word tonight would be instilled upon their hearts, O God. Because we believe, Lord, that your word will not return to you empty or void, but it will indeed accomplish God upon its heart. And Father, tonight I would like to entrust each one in your loving hands that even as we go out from this sanctuary, I pray for your divine protection and safekeeping to be upon each one. As I also, Lord, pronounce your divine blessings upon each one. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turns his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.